Hello everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today I'm going to be explaining strut bars and the purpose of strut bars. Now essentially strut bars are used to increase the rigidity of a car um, for when you're cornering or if you hit a bump or something like that you're going to increase uh, the rigidity of your car and basically it's going to make it a bit more predictable, uh, give it a little bit better handling so that there's not flex in your chassis when you hit a, uh, a bump or something like that or you go into a hard corner. Um, now these particular strut bars that I'm going to be using in this video are courtesy of Redline360.com. Um, I'm going to have a product link and a link to Redline360.com in the description, so if you'd like to check that out, feel free. Um, so let's take a look at, first of all, where these would be installed. Okay, so here we have the engine bay, and basically if you just follow the tires directly up, you can get to your strut towers. So there's the front right strut tower and here is the front left strut tower and what we're essentially going to do is connect those two. Okay so now that we understand where these uh, strut bars are going to be installed connecting the two strut towers let's take a look uh, and kind of analyze the forces that are going on. So I've got two different uh, suspension setups here. One's a McPherson strut, uh, which is basically why strut bars are created. Um, McPherson struts are uh, load-bearing uh, at the top, whereas double wishbones aren't really where the, uh, the coilover uh, connects. So I've got a double wishbone here, a McPherson strut here, and I'm going to talk about some of the forces involved. So first of all, we're going to pretend that we're looking uh, at the back of a car and it's going around a corner. We'll say it's going to be taking a hard right corner. And so what's going to happen is the car's going to want to go to the left, but friction is going to push the car and allow it to maintain that corner and not slide. So this is your friction force here coming in uh, from the road, and here's your tire. So that friction force, here we've got our lower control arm, and the friction force is going to want to rotate this tire uh, kind of down towards the ground about this point of your lower control arm. So it's going to create a moment about this control arm. And when it does that, it's going to be pulling this tire kind of down like that, and it's going to be pulling on that upper strut where that strut connects with the body of the car. So this right here is the body of the car, and then this is where your strut connects. So it's going to be pulling, there's going to be a force pulling on that. So that strut reaction force is what Basically, if you don't have a strut bar, you're just going to have the body of the car, which is going to be the reaction force. If you do have a strut bar, you're going to be using uh, both sides, both towers of the car, and that force is going to pass along here, and both of these towers are going to take that force, uh, op opposing the friction. So, um, once that has been kind of canceled out by two towers, rather than one, you're going to have less flex going on in the body of the car. Now, if the other setup is a double wishbone suspension. So here we're going to have the car going in a different turn. So now it's going to be taking a left hand turn um, and so we're going to have a friction force coming in because the car wants to slide out but friction is going to prevent it and so it's going to push this way. That's going to cause a moment uh, created about this lower control arm and in order to counter that moment there's going to be, have to be a force or reaction force in the upper control arm which is countering it. So Basically, here what we've got going on, this strut reaction force is going to cancel out that moment there. Whereas on the double wishbone suspension, this uh, upper control arm force is going to counter out, counteract that moment created at the lower control arm. So that's going to uh, basically take on the forces from the G-force, the lateral forces, are all going to be absorbed within this suspension setup, which is one of the advantages of a double wishbone suspension. So that said, uh, a strut bar will play a bigger role with a McPherson strut vehicle. Now, for example, with my car, these strut bars are for an Acura Integra, and the base Integra does not come with strut bars. However, the GSR or the Type R Integra do come with a strut bar, even though it's a double wishbone suspension. So why might you want a uh, strut bar even if you do have a double wishbone suspension? Well, as the car leans in quartering, it's going to compress that spring, and so you are going to have as the weight transfers over and the body rolls, it's going to compress the spring and you are going to have a vertical force pressing on the body of the car. So by connecting that, you can kind of transfer this force across the strut bar and uh, allow both sides of the car to take on that force. Also, if you hit a bump, you're going to have a very large vertical force and that's all going to go to that one single strut tower. And so if you've connected your strut bars, some of that, the horizontal component of that force, will pass over 
and you can absorb the force with both sides of the strut tower. So as I was saying, that's why on a Type R it, it comes standard, and quite a few cars out there it comes standard. Also in the rear, you can do applies the same principles, uh, whether this is in the front of the car or the rear of the car. Um, I believe the JDM uh, Acura Integra Type R did come standard with a strut bar in the back. So we can take a bit more detailed look at these strut bars. Um, in the front, this is the front strut bar and this is the rear strut bar. So basically one thing to keep in mind is a strut bar is only as strong as its weakest component. So for example, these are some high strength bolts here since they're going to have a shear force. Um, and then you've got this thick metal uh, here to pass that force along. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And don't forget to check out redline360.com.